All right, so I want you to th uh, um, think about your thoughts and feelings about the elderly as I play this. Can you hear this in the back? Okay, so this is a song I sang for my wife at my uh, wedding luncheon. And, well, you'll see. Make you smile whenever you're sad. Carry around when your arthritis is bad. All I want to do is go over you. I get your medicine when your tummy aches. Build your fire when the furnace breaks. Oh, it could be so nice going on with you. I miss you, I kiss you, give me my coat when you are cold. I need you, feed you, even let you hold the remote control. Doesn't happen. Let me do the dishes in our kitchen sink. Put you to bed when you've had too much to drink. Oh, I could be the man who grows old with you. Who grows old with you? I wanna grow old with you. Yeah, with the song and the picture, it makes you think. In fact, when I first put the picture on, the sound was, oh, I even got some guys. And I never get guys. I even got some, oh. <laughs> you know, I, it, sometimes I guess it could be the guys could say, dude, kind of cool, you know, oh, except I'm going, oh. But that's the feelings you got. OK, good. Now, these are all positive things. OK, now I'm going to contrast this with the song called, I hate old people. I'm just kidding. That's not a song. <laughs> I'm going to have Michael Scott con give a contrast. And he's also going to introduce today's topic, OK? Some of you may recognize Michael. OK? What? Listen closely. I don't want to grow weird sperm because we all want to have kids. So what's Ryan doing here? Oh, I don't know. They're launching a big new business plan, new website, blah, blah, blah. He's being a real twerp about it, so. It's all about youth and agility and streamlining and trying to squeeze out the older people. He's such a snake. Well. I think it's hit with an ageism suit. What is that word? Ageism. You know, the companies, they can't discriminate against people due to old age. Like a couple years ago, we tried to force out some of the older branch managers with a mandatory retirement age, and then Ed Truck, your old boss, threatened us with a lawsuit, so we had to back off. So older people have just as many rights as younger people? Yes, Michael. <laughs> they do. <laughs> By the way, for those of you who've not, who don't watch this, this guy's old, and he heard that they're going to be phasing out the young, older people, so he's trying to be all young and hip now. He dyed his hair. Creed? Yes, sir. Everything OK? Everything's cool, dude. I'm 30. Well, in November, I'll be 30. <laughs> Is there another meeting scheduled? that was going to do the BlackBerry tutorial in here. Michael told us to wait in here. We don't know why. And he's the one who's going to phase out the old people. Oh, man. Good. Older. We're all here. We can get started. Michael, have a seat. We're not Have a seat like there. everybody else. OK. This is so my office. office. Right. Well, there has been a lot of talk about new ideas today. Well, new ideas are fine, but they are also illegal because they are a form of ageism. What? Yes, I am right. <laughs> Did you know that the Age Discrimination and Employment Act of 1967 prohibits employment discrimination based on age with respect to employees 40 years of age or older? I did. Well, technically he's right. 
hey, shut up, Toby. Look, why do we as a society hate old people so much? Because they're lame. No, <laughs> Creed, no, they are not. In fact, many cultures revere old people because of their storytelling ability, like the old lady from Titanic, or the funny things that they can do, like where's the beef? Yeah. Why do you have the big picture up again? You used that already when you burned your foot. We're using the Ben Kingsley too. I was going to put up some new pictures, but um, all of the ink in the printer was gone. Oh. Michael Scott, that is me, come on in. <laughs> Who is this old fart? Did you just stagger off the street out of a box or something? Who is this worthless bag of bones? Well, this guy is none other than one of the founders of Dunder Mifflin, Mr. Robert Dunder. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, Michael, can I talk to you for a second? Sure thing. Excuse me. We have actual work to do. Fine. Then I will call David Wallace, and you can explain to him why you threw the founder of the company out on his ancient butt. Bob, how old are you? I'm 87. 87 years young and still active. That is great. Did you know that Bob is still a member of the board of Dunder Mifflin? Well, I, I, I haven't been to a board meeting in years. I, I send a proxy. Ah, still sends his own proxy. Good for you. I'm going to live for a very long time. My grandma Schrute lived to be 101. My grandpa Mannheim is 103 and still puttering around down in Argentina. I tried to go visit him once, but my travel visa was protested by the Shoah Foundation. I started this company in 1949. Back then it was a, an industrial supplier of metal brackets, mostly, for, for construction. Oh, boy. And then Mifflin. Of course, he killed himself later. Uh, but I knew Mifflin through the Rotary Club. Great. And he was, <laughs> he was at dinner with Beverly and her husband. Oh, what was his name? Uh, uh, Jerry. Jerry Trupiano from, from South Jersey. And he was tall. Both he and Mifflin were tall guys. Great. And That's great. Thank you for coming in. Robert Dunder, everybody. Thank you. you that was good. wonderful. Did you have a ride? Well, I, I, I came here in a cab. Perfect. Well, could you get me that? Inspirational. What have we learned? Well, we have learned that you can't teach an old dog new tricks because it's illegal and you will go to jail. I think that. Okay. So, <laughs> what have we learned? What do you think the topic of today is based on Mr. Scott's presentation? Besides just old people? Ageism. ageism. I, I love how he goes, what was that word? Like when she introduces ageism. Um, how is this contrasted with the song that you heard about the oh, happy old relationships? See, at first you guys were all thinking positive, like, oh, I can't wait to get old. But now it's being portrayed as don't want to be old. Businesses are streamlining. They're getting rid of them. They're old farts. He says, who is this bag of bones? He's just wandering off the street. So the media can have a big role, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, have a big role in how we view the, uh, the elderly and the aging population. Um, he also said at the end, you can't teach an old dog new tricks because it's illegal and you'll lose your job, which is weird, but it's hilarious. Um, he, that's going to be one of your questions here, OK? So we have this view of the age is bad, youth is good, and the media really portrays it. And um, we have these in internal stereotypes that a lot of us aren't aware of, not just about aging, but about just certain people in general. So we'll get to that. OK, now I'm going to have you take um, a Mythbuster quiz. This is, by the way, there's a, did I turn these on? Yes, I did. There is a band it's called The Who. They are not a band anymore, but they used to be a band back in the day, in the 70s mostly. And the, one of the, the lead guitarists, one of the lead guitars, the actual guitarist for the band Pete Townsend said this. This is one of their songs. I hope I die before I get old. Okay. This talks about how your life is going to take a big turn for the worst at a particular age, and how age is bad, youth is good. Okay. That's going to be kind of the theme for today. All right. So, MythBuster quiz. 
Get out a piece of paper. This is where your assignment begins. You're going to put your name. You'll write Thursday. And then 1 through 10. This is true and false. And again, no hybrid TFs. And you will not be graded. I just want you to give your knee jerk response, your answer that you think is right, OK? Don't write what you think that I think you want, or what your neighbor thinks, or what mom thinks you want, OK? Or what you think mom wants and stuff. So here we go. Number one. The majority of older adults will become senile. That means defective memory, disoriented, dementia during old age. True or false? I'm going to go through these fast because I really want a knee-jerk response. Number two, most older adults have no desire or capacity for sexual relations. In other words, most older adults are asexual. And many of you are probably thinking, I hope so, because that's gross. But that's not the case. We're going to get to that. I mean, it being gross is not the case. I didn't just give you the answer. Um, <laughs> yes, that is not the answer. Uh, chronological age is the most important determinant of age. So basically, I'm this number, and that, that means I can tell you how old you are, how, how well you are your age. OK, number four, uh, most older adults have difficulty adapting to change. They're set in their ways. Number five, physical handicaps are the primary factors limiting the activities of older adults. And number six, declines in all five senses normally occur in old age. Number seven, older adults are incapable of learning new information. You can't teach an old dog new tricks, mostly because it's illegal. Uh, number eight. Physical strength tends to decline in old age. Number nine, intelligence declines with old age. And number 10, the majority of older adults say that they are happy most of the time. OK? We will go over those answers in un momento. OK, so now you're going to have maybe put a line underneath your quiz, underneath your, yeah, underneath your quiz, and then you'll have number one. And I want you to do is draw a picture of what you think of when you hear the term elderly. I'll give you about two minutes. I'm not looking for detail. I'm not judging based on artistic ability. Just your, what first comes to mind when you think of an elder, or the term, and you hear the term elderly, OK? So number two, here's number two. Now I want you to. Just right off the cuff, what are the phrases you think of or terms or words when you think of an elderly individual? This is number two. So you'll have number one picture, number two phrases or words that you think that first come to mind when you think of an elderly individual. That's, we'll stop there. OK, now here's some pictures that other college students have drawn, and we're going to psychoanalyze them. OK? So starting here with the uh, reptile. Um, or the worm, I'm not sure. But this person automatically thought of wrinkles and no hair, glasses. Notice there is no smile. Um, so this is very, I wouldn't call this a positive one, but then this one is a coconut <laughs> with a glasses and a smile. So he's smiling and he's declaring to the world that he is old. He's not a coconut. OK? And then. Um, well, he's got the glasses. So I think those are wrinkles as well. Uh, yeah, that's my guess. OK, so here, this is very well drawn. If I was grading on artistic ability, this would be the winner. Um, but there's a frown. And notice the collared shirt and the vest. And then this is the ninja old man. <laughs> Actually, in previous semesters, I didn't know what that was. And I thought they looked like swords. So I'm just like, he's going to go, <laughs> But then some, it's a wheelchair. So what am I implying about the elderly by my own drawing? Um, some of it's positive. Some of it's negative. Some of them could be true. Some of them not. OK, so now I want you to identify stereotypes that you hear. So I'm this. supposed to go down to Florida next week after we're done here. That's where all my uh, relatives live. I don't really want to go. Florida. A lot of old people down there. You know, they live in those minimum security prisons. That's where they put all the old people. 
What's with all the security there with the guard gate, with the arm coming down, everyone's got a uniform, guns? Are the old people trying to escape or are people stealing old people? What is the security problem? I just can't drive around there. You know how the old people drive? They drive slow, they sit low. That is their motto. State flag of Florida should be just a steering wheel with a hat and two knuckles on it. <laughs> and that left turn signal on for when they left the house that morning. That's a legal turn in Florida. It's known as an eventual left. You can signal this week, turn any following year of your life. <laughs> What is that age that old people reach where they decide when they back out of a driveway, they're not looking anymore? <laughs> you know how they do that? They just go, well, I'm old and I'm coming back. <laughs> I survived, let's see if you can. Okay, give me some, raise your hand so I can keep track of them. Someone in the back, yes. They can't drive. What other stereotype? Yes. They all live in Florida. They all live in Florida, or at least that's where they flock to. Any other stereotypes? They don't pay attention. Don't pay attention, not just with driving, but in general. Okay. Oblivious. By the way, on the I was driving to school a couple days ago when I was about to do we were going to do this lecture on Tuesday, and I got to an intersection where we did not have a stop sign, but the people who were perpendicular street did. And the, uh, there was an older, older gentleman approaching me, and we were going to just cross each other's path. But when we reached the intersection, he slowed down to a stop and looked both ways. Didn't know that there wasn't a stop sign. Yeah, yeah I think we've all done that once or twice. Um, he may do it at every intersection. We don't know. But then he got into the intersection. He went around it as if there was like a big pothole in the middle, and there wasn't. It was just normal. He went around the intersection. And then he, when he got to the other side of it, he went straight, really slowly. So I kept looking back. I'm like, did I drive over something? But there was nothing. So it, you, from that, I could be like oblivious or completely clueless of what's going on. But I think um, if you pay attention to yourself, we've all left our blinker on at times. And you hate being, I, I hate when my blinker's on, because I'm like, oh, one of those people. How long have people been thinking I've been turning? No, now I'm turning. Now, now I'm turning. I hate that. So we've all done things, but they seem maybe to do it more often. OK, some other stereotypes? Yes? OK, I don't care. I'm old, and I'm coming back. I don't care. I survived. Let's see if you can. Right? They all live together when they get old. OK, they all live together in their own little communi communities. <laughs> minimum. OK, the minimum security prisons, they might be trying to escape. Why do they have? All of that security. Okay, so here's some more. I want you to pay attention to some more, okay? My parents live in Florida now. They moved there last year. They didn't want to move to Florida, but they're in their 60s, and that's the law. <laughs> you know how it works. They got the leisure police. They pull up in front of the old people's house with a golf cart, jump out, let's go, Pop. White belt, white pants, white shoes, get in the back. <laughs> Drop the snow shovel right there. Drop it! I am not much for the family gathering. You ever sit there and the conversation is so boring, it's so dull. And you start to fantasize. You know, you think, what if I just got up and jumped out that window? Wonder what, you know, just crash right through the glass, you know. Come back in, there's broken glass, everybody's all upset. No, I'm all right, I was just a little bored there. And uh, no, I'm fine, I came back. I wanted to hear a little more about that Hummel collection, Ambrose. Let's pick it up right there. Okay, well, yes. Prune, see, very subtle, good catch. See, the, the person drawing it put in a bunch of things besides what Jerry Seinfeld said. So yes, they like their fiber and prunes, OK? Any others that you saw? Hmm? Dull and boring. And you saw that in the office, right? When the old guy came in, did you notice like five seconds into his thing, his spiel, uh, people just started nodding their head and like, oh, man, this guy's going to go off on a tangent. Boring. So. Jerry Seinfeld said the same thing. They're just so dull and boring. Okay? 
Any others that you saw? Yeah? They like to play golf. They like to play golf. Notice the leisure police were all in golf carts. So, yeah? That picture is kind of depicted that, didn't they? Right? Big hair and things like that. There, and there, see, we could probably go off for another 10 minutes on both of those and on the office just because um, that's funny to laugh about. And I don't think we should feel guilty about laughing about some of these things. But then what happens is that we start to hold on to them and think a lot of them are true and that over 50% of the majority of old people are this way, or the aging population, or just using the term old people kind of sounds derogatory in of itself, OK? So let's go to kind of the source of this. Have you experienced any, and I will need your services, uh, President Baston. Um, have, have, have you experienced, and I don't want anything too uh, like coarse or malicious, but um, all of you probably in some way have experienced discrimination or prejudice, whether it was gender, religion, race, anything like that. So maybe be willing to share. I'll start off with my wife. Anytime she goes to a home improvement type store, they talk to her like she has no idea what she's doing. They talk down to her. And her dad can build houses. He's a carpenter. He can fix anything. My wife is amazing at fixing things and building things. I mean, trust me. She built all of our shelves in the basement. I came home one day, and she had the nail gun out. She's like, all done. And I'm like, all right, I guess I'll just go make dinner. <laughs> so anyways, she, uh, I guess I'll just go sew something, something that's more stereotypical female. So we all get this kind of stereotype sometimes. So what have you experienced yourself that was prejudiced or discriminatory? You got one? Yeah. OK. something and we were working on a team of and there were like seven women and then three guys and one of the women would go and at one point in time there was an injured man that thought that we were so incapable that the women were so incapable of moving something heavy that mm -hmm. he went and hobbled out to the stove and then helped the guys move the stove because he wouldn't let me help even though we all did like the same PT physical training stuff so oh okay pretty regular actually. right um and he in some circumstances, they may argue they're just being a gentleman. Yeah. But there, I, I've kind of seen. Yeah, <laughs> that could be an underlying sexist thing. Yes. OK, any others? Um, are you willing to yell it out, or would you like? Oh, he's a little faster. <laughs> nah, he didn't pick it up. Um, one time, my friends and I got pulled over. It was, it was like midnight, but we were just going to Walmart. Uh huh. How long ago was this? Um, last year. OK, so they just assumed because of your age. Yeah. Oh, I should have put age up there, obviously, ageism. But OK, good. Just John had a similar experience. Can, can you condense it? Yeah, um, it was 419. I was coming back from the Ozarks. And uh, that was the day That's too much detail. Day. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, a old lady in front of us pulled over. And uh, my buddy was like, oh, well, you know, flashing lights, you're supposed to pull over. Two other cars passed us, so we decided to go along. And the cops immediately pulled us over and uh, let the lady go out for like five minutes or so. And then they uh, then they had the drug dog out, and they had the drug dog go all around my car, like scratched up my car. And then uh, they told us to detain the passengers, and so we had to like wait by the police car. And then uh, they had the police dog, and I actually went into my passenger seat, and I guess he smelled weed. This is where it all started to go downhill. And, <laughs> and uh, then the cops told me that where I pulled over back there, they found a football full of weed brooches. And where I pulled over up there, they found a bag of weed. And they were like, well, explain. And I was like, well, oops. <laughs> I mean, it, no, I didn't mean oops. <laughs> I mean, oops. I mean, well, oh. uh, uh, my life's over. <laughs> type of thing. And I was like, sir, you know, it's not mine, it's not mine, it's not mine. I explained, I was like, no, I'll pee test. I mean, you can get my hair follicles. I mean, you can do anything. And, you know, I don't smoke weed. I don't do any of that. And uh, 
He was like, well, you know, you know, you should just confess. I mean, it's just a little ticket. I mean, if it's your buddies, then that's just fine. They uh, actually like badgered us and uh, everything for quite a while. And uh, after about an hour and 15 minutes, they said, well, you know, I, I believe that weed isn't yours, but what do our dogs smell it? And so I, was, I had to explain it again uh, that it wasn't mine. They finally let me go. And then like super trooper style, they pulled me over again. And, and uh, they then uh, wrote me a ticket for uh, failure to signal while changing lanes. Oh. $135 ticket. OK. Yeah. Um, college student, right? Uh, that was the main thing. The, uh, All college students smoke weed. Thing. She didn't get a ticket or anything. She just got a warning. So. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All college students smoke weed. So accept that reality. Okay, let's get one more. That uh, is, yes. Oh, oh really? Oh, um, go ahead. Talk into it. <laughs> no, it was, uh, no, it was um, by Walmart. And I was well, I rolled a stop sign, all right, and the cop pulled. He was a pot county cop, and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, "Great, here we go." My wife's bickering at me. I'm telling you, should stop all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, the cop pulls me over, and he's like, "You know, I pulled you over because you California rolled that uh, stop light or stop sign." I'm like, they oh, call it that here too, California roll. Well, ironically, though, then I pulled out my California driver's license and handed it to him. Uh -huh. and Perpetuating like, the yeah, stereotype. He just looked at me and goes, "Fine," and just let me go. He's like, "Are more. you?" Yeah, swear to God. But wow! Saw the ID, he just was like, yeah, whatever. You people are supposed to do this. <laughs> that is crazy. Wow! Thank you. Um, so, w what we need to determine is how do these beliefs begin? I think a lot of these stereotypes, and we'll break down how the actions come about. How do they first get into our mind? Well, one is we see something, and we just automatically general gen generalize that anybody from that age group, race, religion, whatever. They're all pretty much like this. There's probably some exceptions to the rule, but not very many. Um, or the media. The media really plays it up. Maybe your parents taught you. Because nobody is born prejudiced. Nobody is born racist. Nobody is born that way. It, you learn it through your environment. This is all nurture. Um, OK, so let's go to this. Just rapid fire. Give me the age that you think life will take a turn for the worse, when you, just can't, you can't enjoy the things that you really love to do. 75, 72, 72. No, age. no age at all? If I were to ask this question before we started the lecture, you may be different. Now you'd be like, I don't want to sound ageist. Ageist? Ageist, yeah. What were you saying? Depends on what it is, like what you love to do. Well, so for you personally, it was something that you have to do. OK. Will you still enjoy it? She's saying that when you're 20 versus 40, if you really love to play sports, your body won't be the same. And what will you really enjoy it if you're hurting everywhere? Not that when you're 40, but like when you're 50. OK, so when you're older, will you really enjoy it when you're hurting everywhere? OK? And see, these are good things to discuss and bring up. Students in the past, have, some have said 30. And I'm like, oh, uh, 31 <laughs> over the hill. So, I, you know, as you get older, I remember when I was in my early 20s, and I, it's kind of like when you hit 30, it's like, well, stick a fork in you, you know. But that's not really true, because now I'm pushing it back, and I'm just like, you know what? It's all relative. So. I think, like, with regards to that comment, I mean, your interests change. So, like, sports now, basketball and stuff, but maybe you'll pick up golf when you get older, so you'll still be happy. Yeah, okay, so that. Right there, it, the book talks about it's kind of the rule of compensation, where we do compensatory things to compensate. I might not be able to jump and, and do the same things I used to do, but I can still do these things really well, and I can focus in on those. Or I can try, which is why a lot of elderly do play golf. Not everyone, but a lot of them do, because it's something that isn't too strenuous. I, um, I'm a part-time tennis instructor as well, and there's a lot of elderly that play really well. Now, they play doubles because there's less running. But uh, that you can that's something you still play. I've played, I play basketball with a lot of elderly. And they may not be, be the quickest on the court, but they're usually the smartest players. They ne rarely have a turnover. They rarely throw the ball away. They always hit the pass pretty well. They always hit the shot, wide open shot, something a lot of young bucks don't do because they rely on their athleticism. So there's compensation that you can compensate, OK?
So we'll get to that. We'll kind of bring this all together, OK? So let's give me some of that. And I quickly shout out the phrases that you had written down about the elderly. Retired. Retired. Pictures? Dentures. Oh, dentures. OK. Wise? Who said that? Wise. OK, wise? Bingo. Bingo. Uh, anything else? Caramel. Well, caramel. Okay, I thought you said karma, but caramel. Caramel, like Brax caramel candies. What? Werther's. Okay, Werther's original. Anybody in the back have some words? I don't care if it's der well, if it's yeah, I do care if it's derogatory, but sunny. Oh, hey, Shetty. That kind of a thing. OK. Yes? Talkative. Talkative. OK. And we've kind of seen that portrayed, and they like to just talk and talk. OK. A couple more. Well, early birds. Early bird special. Bingo. Bingo. Another. We got two bingo. We can only have one bingo. Somebody else said bingo. That's OK. That's, it, that breaks the rule of the game. Only one person can get bingo. Then you have to clear off the board. But um, early bird, yeah. Early bird gets the worm, light bird gets the girlie with a $2 perm. So, what's that? Coffee and, Coffee and McDonald's. Okay, now a lot of these, I, do you guys have a pretty good balance? Maybe because I'm playing it up too much. But usually when I do this, there's mostly negative and a few positives, like whys and other things like that, okay? Usually there is a lot of negative stuff because we have this negative view of the older population. And I bet if you looked at your words and your pictures, um, You'd be able to see a lot of negative. Now, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty, because we all hold stereotypes to some degree. And not every stereotype is incorrect. But a stereotype is bad when you start saying every single person is this way in this group. Um, we've learned that all semester, right? Human behavior and development is so variable that you can't ever say this plus this equals that. Um, now, we already talked about the nature versus nurture. But let's go into the Mythbuster <coughs> uh, quiz. Okay, number one is false. And I got to remember the question, and it says the majority of older adults will become senile. And there's your explanation. Um, contrary to popular stereotype, dementia is not a normal part of aging or inevitable. Statistics will vary depending upon the study, but for sake of time, we won't read the whole thing. Number two, most older adults have no desire for sexu uh, sexual relations or capacity. That's false, and it's a myth and a stereotype. Sexuality continues to be an important aspect of an older adult's life. People continue to be sexual beings and enjoy their sexual relationships through late adulthood. Yes, I gave the answer, but I was really talking about it's not true that it's gross. Well, I'm not saying you should go. Let's just go to number the next one. <laughs> number three. Chronological age is the most important determinant of age. That is false. The number doesn't mean anything. Uh, I've known many people, and many of the students have shared that they know people who are in their 60s and run marathons, who do things that young people do, um, who are still witty, who aren't boring, who have all these youthful type qualities. So it depends on how you age, not so much as your actual age. Now, some things are going to be inevitable as time goes on, but there's a lot of variability on that depending upon lifestyle. Um, number four, most older adults have difficulty adapting to change. They are set in their ways. That's false. Older adults are no more rigid than younger adults. Now, when we covered temperament, I think the third day of class, temperament, remember we discussed the temperament studies that show that temperament and personality are fairly stable throughout the lifespan. Unless some big interventions or traumatic experiences occur, then it's going to be pretty similar. It's not going to be exactly the same. There will be some change. But if you are rigid and um, stubborn as a youth, you're going to be the same when you're older. So if you see somebody who's that way and they're older, it's probably because they were pretty stubborn when they were younger, OK? Um, more often than not. Number five, physical handicaps are the primary factors limiting the activities of older adults. That is false. It's actually ageism is the primary factor, because they don't, people don't think they can do certain things, and so they leave them out. They're an afterthought. Well, you're going to die soon, so let's just worry about everybody 60 and younger, maybe 50 and younger, because when you die, we don't have to worry about it. Sadly, that is off, too often the attitude, or kind of the message we are sending as the younger generation. Um, Number six, declines in all five senses normally occur in old age. This is kind of one of those, this isn't fair, that wasn't an option. Well, I just have to mess with you. So mostly true, 
Um, but there's ways to counteract that depending on lifestyle, and it's not all five senses. Number seven, older adults are incapable of learning information. This is the one that's against the law. You can't teach an old dog new tricks, and that's false. There are many. Raise your hand if you know somebody who's over 60 that knows, generally knows how to work their way around a computer and the internet. Okay. Um, but and raise your hand if you know somebody who just doesn't like computers and they're over 60 and they don't want to have anything to do with them. Okay, there's a little bit less hands there. So just based on this study, <laughs> um, the majority do use it. But you can teach them, if, again, back to the number four. If they're setting their ways when they're young, they're setting their ways when they're old. Um, now, of course, there's some those who are older that are setting their ways. But anyways, uh, number, what are we on? Number eight, physical strength tends to decline in old age. Survey says that is true. You can't avoid that, but you can counteract it with exercise, diet, and things like that. So you don't have to be a worthless bag of bones, as Michael Scott calls it. Who's this worthless bag of bones? Because he has no strength. Um, there's many of elderly that are strong because they continue to be. I actually play basketball with a guy who is like, when he gets in the paint, he's only like 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five, but he's like an ox. You cannot move him. He, you try to get a read, and you go up for a shot, and if he's there, you're just going to take a big shot. Not because he's going to go like that, but because he's just strong, and he's just, it's like he's got roots into the ground, and he doesn't move. I'm like, move your feet, this is going to hurt, but he doesn't. So he keeps himself in really good shape. Um, okay, number nine, intelligence declines with old age, mostly false. That depends on crystallized or fluid intelligence, which your text talks about. Um, there is some decline, but again, if you keep your mind active, we all know older people who um, are on top of things and want to learn. Uh, okay, let's quickly go. Number 10, the majority of older adults say that they're happy most of the time, and this is true. We'll get to this study in a minute. Okay, here's basically how prejudice, here's a, a good graph for it. If you look at somebody and you view them with high warmth, but you, have, you view them with low competence, you're going to have pity upon them. If you have low of both, you're going to have contempt-like feelings. Um, you admire them if you're high in both. Oh, they're, they're a warm individual, and they're highly competent. And, um, and you can definitely apply this to those of the aging population. And then you'll be jealous or envy if you see, like, look, they're high in competence, but they're jerks, OK? Um, OK, so how do stereotypes we hear the information. This is how discrimination happens, OK? We hear the information. That's the stereotype. And then we place a value on it. And that's the prejudice. We say, OK, we hear this about um, a particular or about an older per person. Then we say that's positive or negative, And then we hold that belief. And then we just naturally do that through our actions. And we can't really stop it unless we're aware of it. Um, People often don't know what they're doing, discriminatory acts, because they're things that they've always believed, and they don't really know how they came about. OK, um, okay so this is some things that can be done. You can take classes like this. You can change the way you think and act. So that way, when other people hear things, you're counteracting the stereotypes. The media can do a huge role in this by portraying them in a more positive light. We don't have time to watch all three of these clips. But I will show you my favorite one that portrays elderly people in a much better light than most media things. By the way, you have one more thing to do for your assignment, so don't get rid of it. So yes, they can do much. The media can send put things out like that that are much better portrayal that they like to have fun. We know a lot of older people that like to have fun. OK? So Pete Townsend, on his, on his 60th birthday, um, 
frequently writes on his website now that he's over 60 about how happy he is. And studies have shown that you are much happier in old age across the board, not always, and they're not grouchy. Because, I think a big reason is because you learn not to sweat the small stuff so much. You don't get stressed out by every little thing that's thrown at you. You're like, you know, look, I got through other crap. I'm going to get through this. That's one of the big things is emotional regulation. OK, so for your last bit of your assignment, this should just be a few sentences. Shouldn't take you very long. Just a few minutes. And then as you finish, you can, we put the boxes out. As you finish, you can just put the boxes out, OK? Number three. Just write one of your stereotypes that uh, was busted today in the Mythbusters quiz, and write two or three sentences. And number four, write a response that you would give to somebody if you were older. Hmm? 